Tuesday just last year, but man, this year has really gone by faster than last year. And I know many of you have told me the older you get, the faster they go. Well, that's the truth. Um, welcome to Mission Information Sunday. We started out the beginning of the year thinking and planning like we normally do. Those plans got derailed. So we, we thought about uh, what we might do, and I was in hopes that we could have the mission committee together and we had a few new thoughts about uh, programs that we might support for the year. But the way that it turned out and all, uh, we said, let's just, let's hold off and think about next year and we'll go ahead and, and look at the things that we have supported over the last few years that are some great programs that, uh, that do, do special work uh, throughout the community and around the United States. Uh, I was a little discouraged uh, at first, but then when you think about it, we're doing what we're supposed to do. So, uh, so we press on. Um, I'd like to just read a little bit to you here real quick. I, I, I know you have your bulletin and, and Matt wrote this article, but if you want to follow along, you can. But uh, Matt wrote this week, your generosity where missions are concerned this past year is a part of your normal overall generosity. This has been a great year for missions. <clears throat> Today marks the last contribution for missions before the new year begins. You kept the giving up through the spring even when the COVID-19 pandemic raged, you quietly continued your pledge for an additional month so that uh, May's support went on as it had in April. It looks like we'll top the $16,000 mark this year for our mission efforts. We've spent every dime we committed. Matt has kept up with a little bowl back there on the back wall that you can look at every week see where we're at on the donations uh, last year I don't have the number in front of me it's on that board but it was over 17,000 that we asked for and uh, we asked you also a couple of months ago to, to go ahead and continue giving through the month of May when we normally stop at the end of April just because of all the pandemic and all and shifting everything forward and uh, you've done really well doing that we appreciate you very much the uh, first thing I want to look at this morning will be hang on one second here I apologize the mission day of giving will be next Sunday May the 31st we'll do as we've always done we'll have our special contribution on that day and that contribution goes towards the emphasis on our missions that we'll we'll show you here in just a second it's the normal 12-month commitment and we ask that everyone continue to pray for each of these missions throughout the year and, and I'm going to ask you to really uh, concentrate this week as you receive information from us in the mail and pray about that all week long Okay, the next slide we'll look at is the search program. Uh, we talk about search every year. It's a consistent program that is throughout the community, throughout the state, throughout the United States, throughout the world. Uh, they reach a lot of people with uh, television and radio, and I know a lot of us here uh, watch that on Sunday morning, and they do a good work. And we choose to go ahead and uh, continue to support that program and the work that they do. Let me back up for just one minute. I forgot to mention that if you're on the mission committee, you know that we didn't meet this year. Uh, and we chose not to because of the pandemic and all. And that was kind of a hard decision. But uh, the elders got together and talked about all of this. And uh, we, we didn't want to exclude the mission committee or, or anything. But we just felt it would be easier to go forward like this this year. And so I, I encourage you, if you're on the mission committee, do like we've done in the past. Look for uh, missions and outreaches and things that we can do. And let's talk about that. Let's don't wait till January or February of next year. Let's talk about it before. So 
anyway, I apologize for that, but I wanted to, to get that in there. Uh, the next slide will be is the uh, Glenpool Prison Ministry. Uh, that's a program that's that we've sponsored for a long time, and that's pretty special to me. With uh, many of you remember Brother Bill Hamrick that uh, led that program for many years. And last year, you might remember, I told you about um, they were in hopes of finding someone to come in and take over where Bill had left off. Bill and Lenore Hamrick had moved to Texas to live with their daughter so she can help them with uh, health issues and all. And, and Glenpool was struggling to find somebody to head up that mission. The work behind the scenes continued throughout the year. The uh, lady that does the administrative work, I call it administrative work, they, they send out the lessons to the prisons, the Bible lessons, and then uh, when they come back, they grade those. And there's a group of ladies who are committed there at Glenpool that they do that every week. Uh, I talked to my friend Sarah several times here over the last few months, not Sarah, Susan, and uh, she, she told me that those women just, they're excited every week. When I talked to her this week, she said that uh, they're averaging sending out about 75 envelopes a week to the prisons. And inside those envelopes are two lessons. And they're getting back about 150 lessons. They do both of those. And she said consistently, they're not missing any at all. And she said uh, there's more excitement there than there ever has been. And then she did mention that, you know, there are lockdowns at the prisons because of the pandemic and different things, and, and there's more time for them to focus on the Bible studies, but uh, very encouraging there as far as that goes. The other, the other fun piece is uh, they were looking for somebody to lead the program, as I mentioned, and uh, just couldn't get anyone. And so there was a couple, an older couple, that had moved into the congregation from Atlanta, Georgia. He's a retired firefighter in Atlanta. They moved back here because they have uh, family in Tulsa and they wanted to finish out their retirement here. Well, uh, the congregation didn't know it, but one morning he got up and said, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> he said, I'll, uh, I better just go ahead and go through this door that, uh, that God's pushing me through. And, uh, he said, my brother has been in the prison ministry for years and I've been talking to him about it. He said, this is what I need to do. So, uh, he is the new uh, prison minister for Glenpool. He got all of his certifications and everything through the, the Department of Corrections and got ready to go in, and wouldn't you know it, about the time that the pandemic hit. So he has not been able to go into any of the prisons, but uh, everything is set up and ready. And one of my hopes is in the next few months is we'll have a Sunday where we'll have him and some others in uh, maybe from Hope Harbor, and if we can catch Randy Scow here when he's here during the summer, uh, that we can talk to a bunch of these people face to face. And that, that's what my hope and my desire is. But anyway, I'm, I'm really excited about, about Glenpool and what they've got going on with that prison ministry, and that's a, that's a strong program. The next one is uh, Tipton Children's Home. I talked to them this past week just to see where they were at. Uh, you know, Brother Jerry gave us an update last year. Um, they have a lot of children there in that home that are from Liberia, if you remember. And they are full to capacity. Uh, the person that I talked to had told me that several of the parents of these children are now U.S. citizens. And they live in the United States here. Some live in the Kansas area, South Dakota, North Dakota, and another state, I believe. But uh, she said it's a lot of single uh, parents. There's very few that, that the husband and wife, uh, maybe because one of them is deceased or couldn't come to the country. But uh, she said, you know, they, those, these children can't go, go see their parents. Their parents can't come see them, even though they've moved here to the U.S. because of the pandemic and different things. So, and uh, Tipton, along with uh, Mountain States and Hope Harbor, are all struggling in a lot of different ways. Uh, Tipton is, is no different as far as the truck routes. They can't run the truck routes to pick up the food at the different congregations that gather for them. Uh, food, and that's a, that's a big strain on the budget, uh, barely keeping their head above water. 
in that fact, but uh, she said there's been a lot of support from the town people and all, so they continue to press on. No choice, you have to, you have a full house and you have to feed them, so we'll continue to support that mission. The next one is uh, Mountain Stakes, our brother Randy Scow. Uh, talked to him, Randy's doing really well. Uh, if you remember, uh, Randy had struggled with uh, bladder cancer this past year, and uh, he said that he is doing really well. He's finishing up some uh, treatments now, uh, just as a maintenance thing, and Randy sounded as good as ever when I talked to him. Uh, things are going really well there as far as their capital campaign that I talked to you about last year, which is around $7 million. I think they, they have just about half of that now. There are a lot of people who... Uh, have dedicated money, if you can get so much, we'll match. But he had told me that because of that, and the way I understand it, it's pretty typical when you have a big campaign like this, sometimes your normal donations uh, won't come in. People will struggle. They don't have enough to give the boat. They'd like to give the capital campaign, and they let their other kind of slide. And uh, being that way, uh, Randy said they've been in the red most of the year there which is not good. Uh, they've, they've struggled also with truck routes and trying to pick up food. And uh, he said one particular route that they run, uh, they figured up that they usually gather about $35,000 in groceries and they didn't gather any of that. Uh, they had a lady that started a Facebook page that had no connection to the home. Uh, she knew somebody that knew somebody. And so she started a Facebook page and he said, her Facebook page alone, just with these groceries, uh, reached about $20,000, and she was able to go out and gather all that up. And he says he has another lady that, uh, when she retired, he said he didn't know her, there was no connection, but she came to us and said, I'm going to buy a van, and I'm going to start gathering groceries for the home. He said, hey, go get it. So she's been busy, and he said she's a truck driver. She just gets out there and sets these routes up herself and, and goes and gets the food. So. That has sustained them there at Mountain States, but uh, they, they continue to struggle just like Tipton and just like Hope Harbor. So remember them if you would. Next we'll talk about Hope Harbor. Um, Hope Harbor uh, this past year has gone through several things. You know, last year we mentioned to you that uh, they were in the process of building a new cottage that was completed in February, and it is open, and I believe they have a new set of house parents that will go into there. So um, They're also uh, currently remodeling one of the oldest cottages on campus. And I've seen some pictures of that uh, through Tim and Diane, and uh, that, that's, they're, they're continuing to live there and do those remodels, and I know that's probably tough, just like us being at home and doing remodels. But, um, Hope Harbor, like the other two that I mentioned, have had struggles. Um, they've had to shut their thrift stores down, the one that's Claremore, Bartlesville, and then Rogers, Arkansas, and because of the pandemic, and, you know, all those donations that you guys uh, give to freely constantly, those items are sold and then that money goes directly to the home. So that, that has been cut off, but the Bartle, or the Rogers, Arkansas store has been open a week or two, I believe, uh, Claremore and Bartlesville will open in the next week or so also. So hopefully that will kind of return to normal. And if you have donations that you want to give, we're, we're glad to take them. Uh, talk to Linda or myself, and we'll, we'll take those every day up there during the week. Uh, also, in the month of June, the uh, Hope Harbor will have a new executive director coming excited about that. He's a young man that lives in the community that goes to church there in Claremore and has a lot of different connections. I can tell you more about him lately or later on uh, if you'd like to know, but uh, I'm really excited for that and hopefully we'll get him here in the next few months to meet him so you can talk to him. And one last note is the summer school session for the residents will begin on June the 1st and I assume that they're probably doing that, some of that online. Is that correct? Sorry back on campus, okay. And, and I know they've been doing some counseling online with the students and the parents, the ones that have gone home during the spring break time. That's something that I'll mention too, that Randy said they kind of got caught there at Mountain States 
by the time that the pandemic hit, uh, you had some kids that were home on spring break seeing their parents and some that were on campus. And so you couldn't really let those ones back that have been home and you can't let the ones that are on campus go home. So it's, it, it's, it's been a tough time for everybody at, at all three, three children's homes. So, so remember them, if you would, in your prayers as they continue to serve but struggle. And the next slide we'll look at here is contact mission, contact Church Christ. Brother Jonathan Stein, who was going to be here with us this morning, but a couple of days ago I talked to Jonathan, and he said, hey, we've been uh, doing the food bank for the west side of Tulsa here out of our church building, and he said we've had a lot of folks that, that needed to be fed, and they're coming regularly. And he said, we have been in contact with a lot of people. We wore a mask. We do what we we're supposed to. But I'm starting to present a couple of signs of uh, symptoms of COVID. And he said, as young as I am, I really don't think it'll be a big deal. But I don't want to come and expose anybody. I was like, no, stay home. <laughs> and he said, uh, I, I weekly, I just record for... Uh, contact I do a, a sermon or information online and he said I'll just do that for you guys if you'd like I said that would be great so here in just a few minutes uh, Jonathan will give us an update on what they're doing at contact and we look forward to seeing him this summer too they've got a lot of things going on they're going to be back in the office hopefully on June the 1st over there they have um, pulled their mission into it was Tulsa but they want to focus more on West Tulsa, and specifically zip code 74107. That's their intention. They started doing that last year, uh, and Matt and I have talked to him a couple of times this year already. We sat down with him at the office, and that's going really well. Um, they had just felt like it was just almost out of control the way that they were trying to do it all over Tulsa, and they were stretched very thin. They had a lot of members that were attending church there that had come to the point, to the breaking point almost. Of, I, I don't know how much longer I can help you. It's, it's a lot of stress. It's difficult. And, you know, with a lot of, a lot of kids coming in every week. Uh, they made a decision at the end of last year to, uh, on Sundays, that they would just worship together as a congregation. Because throughout the week, they are at several different locations throughout West Tulsa that uh, they do a lot of things for these kids and have large numbers and they said let's let's pull back on Sundays worship together instead of just having a crowd control all day Sunday in chaos we need that for ourselves we need to be able to worship so they have done that it's worked out very well for them and they're not losing members like they were because of the burnout that is a very good thing. And like I said earlier, I hope that Jonathan will, will be here in the next few months and he can talk to you again. But the, the video you're going to watch today is very good. We'll look at the summary slide real quick. Uh, next, just give you a breakdown. This is the smallest amount that I can remember that we've ever asked for, unless somebody else can remember something. Yes, sir. Say again. He's, he's finished with school. Carol asked about my nephew that was in the AIM program. You know, I've had a whole lot, a list of family that has gone through the AIM program. Um, he is finished with his program. He is back in the United States from Brazil. He's going to start attending college, I believe, in the fall. So our support there is, is done with him. It's finished. I think we finished up in February. Isn't that right, Kathy? Last check, I think, went there. Uh, his sister is in the AIM program, but she has enough support going forward. And the week that she was supposed to ship out, and I believe go to Brazil, that's when the pandemic hit and they cut everything off. So she's at home waiting along with all the other AIM team members uh, to go throughout the world. And, and they still don't know yet when they may go. But thanks for asking about that. I forgot about that. But the things that we'll, we choose to support this year, if, if you'll choose to support those also and pray about those, is of course the search program, TV and radio broadcast for $1,200 a year. The Glenpool Prison Ministry, 3000 
Tipton Children's Home, 1,200. Mountain State Children's Home and School, 2,400. Hope Harbor Children's Home and Academy, 3,000. And the Contact Church Christ, 3,000. Which comes to a total of $13,800 per year. So uh, be thinking about that if you would. And let's go ahead and, and watch uh, the video with Jonathan here. It's a little bit at times, a little bit hard to hear. If you have questions, uh, you can ask me. We, we watched it yesterday evening, and I'm pretty well up to, on what he talked about here in this video. So let, let's take a few minutes and watch that. Well, good morning, Carbondale family. I'm glad to be with you this way. I'm sorry I can't be with you the way we expected. Uh, a few days ago, I started feeling some symptoms that made me have a little pause. Uh, I don't want to accidentally bring anything in. So we decided we'd go ahead and do it this way, and I'd be able to give you an update uh, through this video. So I just want to share with you guys what is going on down the street at Contact. So let me share with you first off a couple pictures. Here's our family, me and Brittany and Laura on Easter Sunday, being all family there at our house as we worshiped uh, on Easter, like I'm sure you guys did through, through video. And then here's a picture that I thought was fun of Laura getting to meet Spider-Man at uh, one of the places here in Owasso where I live. Wheels and Thrills, they did these character dress-up days where you could drive through and get to meet some characters. So I thought you guys would like to see that. Uh, so that's our family. We're doing, we're doing well. Laura is two and a half now, and we're uh, enjoying getting to spend some time together and uh, get to, to be family through this. So let me share with you, uh, aside from our family, what's going on at Contact. I want to share with you real quick. Uh, earlier this year in January, we did a, an overview of our vision and our mission at Contact. And so I want to share those with you, our, our purpose statement. Um, and the underlined phrases are things that I added into it this year. So our purpose over at Contact is to grow disciples, create kingdom community, and develop leaders in every neighborhood of West Tulsa and beyond. So before we just had the word Tulsa instead of West Tulsa, but as I've talked with you guys about in the past too, we are focusing more and more at Contact on our neighborhoods in West Tulsa. And so we are trying as a church body all together to be part of that, that purpose. And so that is that is our big goal that we're, that we're always after. And let me share with you our mission statement, which is a little longer. It says, Contact Mission Church of Christ serves to make disciples of Jesus Christ by planting seeds of hope and a future among youth and families from all walks of life and circumstances. So even though, of course, we do do a lot with... Um, low-income neighborhoods, we're not solely focused on that. And I say that, we do this by following Jesus into West Tulsa's apartment complexes, neighborhoods, and public schools to share the good news and create kingdom community. And as we serve, we also train and empower congregations and youth groups across Tulsa and beyond to do the same in their own backyards. One of the things that's really important for us is as we're doing the ministry here in West Tulsa, that other groups get to come in and experience that with us and that hopefully some of the things that we're doing will be things that can be replicated or the spirit of them can be taken and done in other places and other contacts, contexts to be important and influential in those communities as well for the kingdom. So that's the big, the big overview of what's going on at Contact. Uh, let me share some news since January. The last time I was here was in December, right after our Christmas store, so I got to share some of that with you guys. Uh, let me share some things that have gone on since January. First off is Kyler Irwin. This is Kyler, his wife Ashley, two of their kids, Bensley and Isley, and they've got a, another child on the way. He came on staff full-time with us as our worship minister and evangelist. And uh, he is following a lot in Ron's footsteps to go out and do a lot with adult ministry. We're really excited to have him here. He and his wife are both Tulsa natives, so they are really plugged into the Tulsa community. Um, you know, like some of you guys might have experienced, um, you know, over time, especially since he grew up one place and then went somewhere else, they've been involved with multiple congregations in the area. So he has a lot of connections that are really great. But also his heart is is incredibly for the community and for the things that are going on at Context. So we're really excited to have him. He's actually been leading singing with us since last summer, uh, but full-time staff came on in January. So that's a big thing that we're excited about. Um, things that were continuing to happen up until spring break, we had our Warriors for Christ program, which we've told you guys about before, where we go into Webster, there's Ron with his dog one day uh, doing Warriors for Christ and getting to share with some of those kids. I think this is actually from last year, but it's a good picture. 
just sharing words of encouragement with these kids. This whole last year, we've been going through 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the words that explain love. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, you know, the, the rest there. And so what we've been sharing is how those words are a part of love and how each of those words is important for us as we learn a whole picture of love. And so we, we got to do that up through spring break. The rest of the words we had to share on Facebook. So if you're interested in seeing kind of what that's like, obviously it's not going to be the same, but you can check out Contact's Facebook and see some of those lessons that Kyler and I did online. Second thing was we did our Bible Kids Club, which uh, is at Eugene Field. There's a picture of some of the boys that are in that. There are about 20 kids from first through fourth grade that are involved in that. And that's a great time to get to share some stories with kids after school, in the school, um, and get to really encourage and teach and go a little deeper. Because Warriors for Christ, we do about 10, 15 minutes. We hang out with them for about 20, 25 minutes. Bible Kids Club is about an hour and a half every week, and so that's been a really good time. But as you guys know, things changed suddenly, and so uh, we had to make some shifts. So here's one of our pictures from a Zoom call we were on for our Good News meeting. We had the opportunity to do a lot of stuff online, and there were some challenges with that. There were also some really great things with that. There are things that we had never done before, like we didn't have a church directory, and one of the very first things we did once we got online is we said, we need to make a church directory so we can make sure we're checking in on everybody in more ways than we had been before. And so that was a very good uh, for us first thing. We also had opportunities for people who couldn't get around as easily before to attend certain things like our good news meeting. People who had never been to that in the past got to show up for uh, good news. And then we've had some other opportunities to with online church on Sunday morning uh, where people have gotten to worship with us from all over the place. Uh, one of our guys that's always there is originally from Mexico and his wife is still in Mexico. And so she's gotten to participate in our worship every week and be really involved with our church community since we started doing online. So that's been really awesome. And we've really loved getting to do that. Now with Warriors for Christ, one of the things that I got to do after Warriors every Thursday was sub at Webster. And that's been something that's been a really great part of ministry for me. And uh, obviously with school shutdown, that didn't happen anymore. So what I got to do instead is jump in with our contact food pantry. So I wanted to put this up there for you guys to see the contact food pantry is open every Thursday from 9.30 a.m. to noon. A lot of restrictions are currently lifted, as in like weekly visits are permitted. Uh, also, the income level has been raised a little bit because some people... Uh, need extra help even though they have a little bit more income with what's going on right now. And what we're doing is families will drive up to the door on Thursday mornings on the southwest door uh, under our overhang and someone will put the food in. No contact is required with that. So if you guys know of anybody that's in need of food, that is going on every week at contact on Thursday mornings. And that's something that is great and easy to just send people to. We generally are looking for people in 74107 area code but we do not stop people from other places from getting stuff as well. So I just thought I would share that with you guys so that you know about that. So the big change is how are we going to do summer is a big question for us. And we're still making plans on that. But uh, even with that, we're going to still have four interns this summer. Here's two of them. And I picked uh, pictures of the top one is Kaylee and the bottom one is Samri. And they were two of our interns last summer as well. And so they're going to be back this summer. And then we're going to have two new interns. One is named Jillian. She's from Canadian, Texas. The other one's name is Kiva. She is from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Kaylee up top is local. And Samri is from Blanchard. So we're going to be doing a lot of digital stuff with them. We're going to have a lot of videos made. We're going to do a lot of work that's online. We're going to try to do FaceTiming with kids in the neighborhoods. We're going to do uh, driving out to neighborhoods and hanging out on porches with a good distance and a mask on, I think, so that we can still share the word and do a lot of the stuff that we've done in the past at Contact, but uh, with some wisdom, hopefully, of, of how things have changed. Um, our camps that we had this summer, uh, one of them that was in Missouri, we just decided is better off if we don't do it. Uh, another one that our teens went to for the first time last summer at Oklahoma Christian has moved online, so I'm really interested to see what an online week-long camp looks like. We'll find out. And then our big camp, Camp Contact, which is three weeks in July, uh, we're going to make a lot of changes for. We um, 
usually have about 12 to 15 youth groups that come. That's going to be halved, if not more, uh, once we get there. And so instead of bringing kids to our building, because we usually drive in 75 to 80 kids every day, uh, you know, you can't stay six feet apart when you're in a van. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go out to the apartment complexes on a schedule, and we're going to bring something to those kids at their at their places. There are, our big plans that we've made for this summer are going to be pushed forward to 2021, and then we're going to come up with some new stuff for this summer that hopefully is going to be meaningful and, and really uh, feels still like our camp, even though it is closer together. And then one last big change that's gone on is we have hired a youth minister. It's been a long time since there's been a youth minister uh, at Contact, and Valerie Richardson is going to be our youth minister. I'm really excited about Valerie. I've been um, connected to people in her family since I was a freshman in college, so that's been about uh, 12 years now. And so when her resume came forward, I was super excited about that. So she's really excited. She's already getting some stuff going. This picture is from her wedding on May 15th. That is her husband, David, and they are coming to Tulsa. They were She was from Amarillo. They both went to Oklahoma Christian, and so we're really excited to have her. Uh, she's going to do some great work and has already, like I said, started kicking some work out and is, is doing a great job. Um, so that is the main big stuff that's gone on at Contact and is going on. We're really excited still about this summer. We know there's going to be some challenges and some changes, but we're going to we're going to move through those and I think it's going to be really excellent still. So before I go, I want to share a passage with you that's been really meaningful to me through this time. Going through some of the challenge and some of the pain of this time and thinking about it. And I want to read to you guys from Lamentations chapter 3. This is going to be a familiar passage for many, but I still think it's incredibly meaningful. It says in Lamentations 3, verses 20 through 24, and this is the New Living Translation, I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Man, are we, we feeling some of that right now because as many things that have happened that have been so good and so new, there's also been a lot that has had to be left behind through this. Yet, he says in verse 21, I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. And that's, that's such a big thing for right now, is that this has not been wonderful, but God in whom we hope will do incredible things through this time. And we know that even though there's been some things that have been lost, God's kingdom has not been lost. God's church has not been lost. And we are going to find new ways, and God is going to show us new ways that we can share the good news, that we can reach people's lives, and that we can be the bride of Christ and go out and spread the kingdom. So I'm still really excited about that. It's the very last slide for you guys. This is kind of our motto or something like that at contact, that we think souls, that we show up and interrupt lives for the kingdom. And even with this, even with going digital and a lot of things, and some of those things will stick around, uh, there are ways still to think souls and show up and interrupt lives for the kingdom. And that's what we're going to be, and that's what we're going to do as we go forward. So I want to thank all of you so much for the way that you love us and that you support us and that you're praying for us and that you're joining us for different things with contact. And I'm so thankful that I get to be a part of you guys' family as well. And I just want to say thank you on this, this Sunday that you gave me some time to share with you guys. I hope that, um, that through all this, we will learn to trust in the Lord more than we ever have. And that we will believe that God is going to do big, big things. All right. Grace and peace. Love y'all. Jonathan's a good guy, has a big heart for that program. Uh, he, he is very uh, partial to Carbondale. Uh, we, we've been good friends to him, and he feels like he's made a really good connection, not just because of support or because he works there. He just feels a connection to Carbondale and, and told me that he looks forward to any time that he could come here and speak and, and 
just give a lesson and not necessarily about uh, the mission work there, but uh, just to be here and, and, and be with us. One of the things that I forgot to mention that's very important, it's an opportunity. Uh, when I spoke to Randy Scow there with uh, Mountain States, uh, many of you know Randy lived in the community here for a long time and has connections here. But uh, last year I told you that they had a program that they wanted to start called the Transitional Living Program. A lot of times when these kids graduate high school and move on, you basically lose them or they'll go to college or go back home. Well, um, quickly I'll tell you that there just happens to be a young lady that has moved here to be with her aunt. She does not have a father or a mother. Uh, she has moved to the 71st and Highway 75 area where we live and is living with that aunt and is going to be there throughout the summer until she goes to Oklahoma Christian. She's looking for a connection to be able to go to church. And so I've asked Randy to reach out to that family and talk to them. And hopefully um, she'll be able to come here and I can introduce you to her and, and we'll go from there. But it, it, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to be with someone who has been in the children's home for a long time and is going on to college. Before we close this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I'd like to read to you from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided <clears throat> in your heart to give, excuse me, <clears throat> or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and all times, having all that you need, you will abide in every good work as it is written. Let's pray together before we have our invitation this morning. Father, we thank you for this time that we've had to, to review your work. Father, help us to uh, pray about this this week and think about it consider uh, what we'll do to further your work. Father, be with uh, Jonathan and his team at Contact as they're doing a great work there. Father, help us to be able to go along beside them and learn from them and maybe they can learn some things from us and team up where we can be a part of the mission for the West Side for you. Father, we ask you to be with the, those who are members of the mission team that we did not get to meet with this year. Father, help them to have faith and don't lose sight of what our mission is. Help us to grow stronger throughout the year with the, those who were, were partnered with in this. And hopefully, we'll get to meet some of them again this summer uh, into the fall. And we can, can grow stronger with them go forward with these missions. Father, we ask you to forgive us of our many sins. Be with us as we struggle each day to be better Christians and to help save souls. In Christ name we pray. If you have a need or a desire this morning, we're here for you. If you need prayers of the congregation or you'd like to study more about the Bible, you can let us know. We'll be here at the front to receive you. So, Let's stand and sing as we end this morning.